Alright folks, welcome back to the Battle for Westnoth. Once again, we are starting up right where we left off. Uh, we've just finished defending Blackwater Port from the Orcish invaders and killing their commander right at the end of the scenario. And we are about to move on. So, the Isle of Alduin. And so the party landed on the Isle of Alduin, in kind of a jerky way. I think the game is still loading assets. I just fired it up. So this is Alduin. It looks a little desolate. I fear so, Conrad. It seems the orcs have come even here. Here to the place where I was born, where I was trained. Delphidor, you melodramatic old man. Oh, a party of elves has landed. We shall drive them back into the sea. I like how he's got like a like a an orc katana over here, an orc scimitar, very very shallowly curved. I did not think the orcs would have come here. This island used to be so beautiful. We must recapture it. To arms! All right, so we got twenty-four turns, and we just have to defeat the enemy leader. It's a very straightforward scenario. So down here we've got an orcish warrior. And you can see this is actually a, a fairly large map uh, with two distinct paths. You can go straight down this way, and you can go over this way and then head down and fight in this pass. Fighting in this pass in some ways gives the orcs, excuse me, an advantage because they're really comfortable on hills. Uh, but on the other hand, a lot of the terrain is on your side. So if you can get over here quickly, establish a line there for the night and then push down, you can fight on, on favorable terms. Meanwhile, over here, that's really easy, and using this forest to guard your troops to gather for the final push helps your elves out a lot. So first of all, let's grab Delphidor and have him go take a village. I found someone hiding in the village! My lords, I have been hiding in the village from the orcs like many of the other magi here. I pledge myself to your service. Let us move swiftly to recapture the island. Alright, let's join together to fight the evil ones. So now we can recruit magi. Magi are an interesting unit. They're expensive. They cost 20 gold. They're lawful, unlike the rest of my units. Well, them and horsemen are both lawful. Basically, these human units that we're getting are, are lawful. Their melee attack sucks, but their ranged attack is moderately powerful, and it's a magical fire attack, so high chance to hit, and it does fire damage, which some unit types are extremely weak to. Uh, many, some of the unit types resist it pretty well, but some are extremely weak to it. So, we are going to recall our two horsemen. They're both experienced, and recalling them takes less gold than recruiting a new horseman. We're going to recall our shaman, who is almost leveled. So close. We're going to recall our captain. And we're going to recall our ranger. And then none of these guys are worth recruiting. Or recalling, rather. So then we're going to recruit a couple of elvish scouts. We're going to recruit some fast movers to go here. We're going to recruit a couple of elvish scouts. And then we're going to recruit one Elvish fighter. And then Conrad can grab that village to limit the uh, loss of money this turn. Now this is one of the games where you end up leaving your commander at the base for most of the game. Because uh, you have a lot of villages available. And so there's a lot of recruiting that can be done. Conrad needs to go back there. Uh, I'm going to move the elves south primarily. Send horsemen over there, send a horseman over there. That lady can go down there. Uh, we do need to take that this turn. Conrad can do that, actually. We'll send the Elvish captain there, scout there, and then one scout over here to act as a fast mover for this gang. And next turn we'll start recruiting again since we're already up to 11 income. Meanwhile, the orcs are pumping out orcish archers and... Oh, they're pumping out kind of a mix of units. They've got Orcish Archers, they've got their Wolf Riders, and then they've also got, they've recruited a Goblin Spearman, which is a level 0 unit. Very weak, and has negative traits, so this, this one is weaker than usual. But extremely cheap. It gets the most, pretty much the most HP for the cost available, I think. Pretty much. So, let's run across there to that village. Take that village. We're kind of spreading out as we do this, just because everyone's moving at different speeds, but it's worthwhile to secure as much income as possible as early as possible. That Elvish Scout can hook around down there. 
So we've got kind of Task Force Elf over on this side. We've got Task Force Dudes over on this side. Conrad, meanwhile, I'll go back here. We're going to need to reinforce Task Force Dudes. Let's recruit another Shaman to give them some healing backup. And you can see they're kind of splitting up their forces, which is what we wanted. So... Um, these two villages, I think, are a bridge too far. If we send our scout down there, they'll be they'll be uh, shot to death. So instead, we're gonna we're gonna kind of fill in the gaps behind our lines. Delphador can hold the front line very effectively, especially with a horseman backing him up. Meanwhile, down here, you can take that village. You take that village, and then you two. There's not a whole lot of cover right here. What I could do is get up here and start shooting arrows at this uh, wolf rider. So I think I'm going to do that. And then we're going to put our captain on the village. And the ranger is going to... Uh, that wolf rider can still get to us. So the ranger is going to come up here and shoot bows at him. Good shooting. Three out of four hits on 60% defense terrain. That was very good. That wolf rider is probably going to pull back at this point. But we can still we can still chase it down and kill it if we really want to. Now let's recruit. Let's get a couple of let's get an elvish archer first off, and then Conrad is still going to wait a few more turns. Conrad's just going to be pumping out units basically. Like he's probably not going to fight much if at all during this scenario. Yeah, Delphidor's getting bit a little bit. When the orcs are on hills like that, we definitely have to wait till morning before we attack them. Although, it is morning now. Uh, go for it. Good job. Alright, Haldiel is within 2, H 2 XP of leveling up. So, what we can do now is we can actually run a guy down, take that village. Set our mage up to take these villages. Get our healer moving over. Uh, that's bad. Let's get our scout over here. To provide cover to make sure they can't get after my shaman. Send that archer over that way. I would could use another unit down south as well. I'm up to 28 gold, which means this turn I can actually recruit two elvish fighters. There we go. And Delphador. Um, can't actually be attacked by a whole lot if he moves down to that village. He could be shot by two archers, but I don't think two archers and one wolf rider can actually kill him. So, that would give up this village to these Orcish Archers, though. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just stay put. Now, that doesn't however mean we can take this village at this point. With our Elvish Scout, we can get the Ranger to move there and shoot him. Get the Captain down here and the Shaman and go take that village. I know Raniel's not participating in the fighting yet, and she will, I promise. It's just we're, uh, we're doing other valuable things with it right now. But you can see our income is now quite high. It's really too bad that the, El that the Elvish Scouts don't have a bow-firing animation like most other units do. Oof. 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 Don't do it. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. Don't do it. They did it. Oh, well. Poor Elvish Scout, whose name I never learned. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest. Let's kill this guy real quick. There we go. Good job, Haldiel. Okay, Haldiel can now level up. We can level him up into a knight, which we saw before. Or we can level him up into a lancer. Now, lancers don't have a level 3, and they have less hit, fewer hit points, but they have even faster move and they get a triple high damage charging lance attack. So they're good in multiplayer when you need a unit that can dash in and just murder a guy really quickly. However, I'm gonna go with a knight because they're tougher and they get the sword attack as well. Plus they can level up again to become a level three. And if you have the option to become a level three, you should always take it. Meanwhile, our mage will continue uh, capturing new villages. Move our elven swordsman squad out and Delphador. Delphador, I think, needs to come down here and blast this guy. Because I don't want him getting another round of shots on my scout. 
And my Shaman can move up there. Now, I could charge one of these troll whelps. I feel like it would probably be a bad idea, but I could do it. 17% uh, chance. Let's steal that other village. Get that guy down here. Shoot him with bows. Okay, he's almost dead, and he's also almost dead. So 52% chance to kill him. The reason why I'm considering killing him is because I don't want him going off to steal my village. But then, honestly, if he goes to steal my village, I can get him immediately. So let's kill this grunt. I like the orc grunt death animation, by the way. It's just, it's so satisfying. Okay, so, uh, Team Elf is doing well. We've secured the top of the hills on this side. Uh, still got 18 turns. I think we're doing, we're in a really good spot. Yep, I knew he would do that. The AI loves stealing villages whenever they can. Okay. Now, let's keep pushing. Down on this side, what I would like ideally would be for this guy to be badly injured and then finish him off with Raniel. Actually, actually Raniel doesn't need to kill anybody. She just needs to fight three times. Go back and shoot him with bows. Good job. Now, Elvish Captain. And let's shoot this Goblin Spearman. There we go. Now, you could charge him. Wouldn't quite be enough to kill him, though. Let's get this knight down here. And he can deploy the lance charge. 49% chance to kill. Um, let's just use the sword. Then we can feed the kill to our other horseman. Yidur, there. Get down there to provide healing. Delphador. What's the chance of killing him? 65%? Uh, hmm. He's going to get to punch somebody if we don't. That's not terrible. Uh, poor loyal Elrian is just run, running around capturing villages. Did I forget to recruit anything last turn? Let's recruit another mage. Let's recruit another scout. I do like scouts, they're just hard to level. And the level up the level up for scouts is not super powerful, but it's really cool. And it has a lot of utility, which is why I like it. Let's take Delphador down here and just kind of block. And let's put that scout on the village, keep him alive. He's resilient and quick, which means basically he he loses a little bit of HP, but he's fast, and then he gains some HP back. So he's kind of default in terms of attack strength, but he's fast. So I want to keep him alive. I want to level him up. So we're just gonna we're just gonna play patient with him. Okay. We're making a ton of money per turn now. And yes, they're going to attack Delphador because he's a high-value target. Never mind that they can't possibly hurt him badly enough to matter. Good. Excellent. They attacked Raniel, now she only needs to fight one more time, and she will level. Levels, yay! Uh, 14. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna kill that guy this turn, so let's have Delphador just use his staff. Great, so that we can feed some experience to our buddies. Excellent. Okay, we've got a kill with him. Now the Elvish Archer can come down here, shoot this whelp full of holes, and then we can we can get him with a charge. Excellent. Well done, folks. Good job, team. Now, that's an Orcish Grunt. Just uh, entangle him real quick. Great, so now we can level up. Now we can level up to, we get to pick what kind of level up we want. Elvish Druid, cures and heals plus eight, and attacks a little bit better, has a ranged piercing magical attack. Or, the Elvish Sorceress, more HP, and a much more powerful ranged arcane attack, which is fairly rare. However, no healing. What we want is a high level healer, so we're gonna go with the Druid. And then, this Elvish Warrior, Fighter, we'll kill him, and now he's halfway to leveling up too, so we'll have another another hero or uh, captain pretty soon. Let's go with the Elvish Ranger, let's duck into the woods, and this captain come right there. Can't quite reach the uh, 
the village, unfortunately. Now, Haldiel. I don't want to launch Haldiel all the way down here because he'd get ganged up on by Usadar and Gush, as well as that uh, Orcish Grunt during the night time. So what I want, I think, is I want to put Haldiel on this village. Great. Uh, we The fighting may actually end before these units get anywhere near it. Like, that would, I would not be surprised at this point, because we're going, we're burning through this pretty quick. Nope, and they didn't even attack. That was kind of smart of them. Let's get this archer down here and see if we can get uh, Yidder leveled up as well. Oof. Oof. What damage are you, 15? Yeah. Okay, let's, uh... Around him. Now, if you've played hex game, hex-based games before, you'll already know this. But if you're surrounded on three sides of the hex like this, you can't move because of zone of control. You only ever move one space, and that ends your move since you're still within an enemy's zone of control. So let's spear charge him. Good hit. Yidder is doing really well this round. I don't think he's missed a hit yet. Let's make him a knight as well. This uh, this match has been very very good for us. This map has done us well. We've gotten several levels out of this. Captain can move over there. Now we got mage coming down. Let's get this scout. Just a little bit of experience. So first of all, we'll entangle. Good. And then we'll move down here and shoot him with a bow. Won't kill him, but we'll be able to milk him for a little bit more XP. That's definitely all the units we're going to need, so now Conrad can move out in case he's needed. I might be able to kill the, cap the, the uh, enemy commander with him, which would be nice. Or I can kill him with Mavir here and get a hero. I'd like for my second uh, Elvish fighter level to be a hero. He's at 19 HP. I don't want to kill him with Haldiel. Yep, of course he's attacking the scout. We knew that would happen. Let's get you down this way. Elvish Fighter, Mage, Delphidor, just stay on there. Now, what I want to do is weaken him enough that this scout can kill him to get experience. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, good job. Uh, 93%, 84%. Let's go with the sword. There we go. Okay, 21 out of 32. We just need 11 more for the Elvish Scout. Now, we're at this point, we're kind of at the point of deciding who we want to level. Do I want to get my Elvish Hero first, or do I want to get my Elvish Rider first? Um, I think I want to get my Rider first. I like Riders, I really do. Let's get a line of Knights and Archer assembled down here. And let's get, oh no, I should have, should have left her next to the Scout. Oh well, that's fine. He's not that badly hurt. Okay. This one's going pretty quick. This is often a pretty, pretty quick scenario. Alright, so that Orcish Grunt is at 22 HP. Well, yeah, let's shoot him with the Archer. There's a chance she'll kill him, but... Never mind. <laughs> Never freaking mind. Um... Now then, let's get down here and entangle. Okay. I don't want to kill him. I just want him to be there, waiting for when I get around to it. This elf, this dish elvish scout went all Sean Connery for a second there, and get over there to kind of block. That means we can get you down and get a little bit of bow action going on. Great. So you only need 10 XP now. Get our Elvish Captain down nearby. Everyone just collapse on the enemy. We will metaphorically suplex them into the Stone Age. Uh, and for the Knights, I don't actually need the Knights here right now, so I'm just going to go run around and take villages with them real quick to maximize money. Yep. Figured that was going to happen, but that means that we can trap him on that village away from his... No, 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 no! <sighs> I mean, that's okay. But really, did you have to... Did you have to die just then? Did you have to? Um, because I'd like to kill him with Mavir, because Mavir will level up from that. So I'd like the scout to kill this guy. So let's get the scout over there. 
Let's get a knight in there. Let's get you in there to entangle him to minimize his damage. Let's get an archer over there. Let's get a little bit of sword action going on. Ooh, wow. Okay. Excellent. Nope, no luck. That's fine. We're just going to bombard this guy with arrows for now. He's already slowed, so he needs some thorns. Down to 18 health. He'll heal up at the end of next turn. Let's move you back to heal. You all can advance. You can jump in here and just pick away at him a little bit. That's fine. Okay, I don't know who he's going to attack. I hope it's the scout. Because whoever he attacks will probably kill him. Nope, it was the captain. They're just now they're just trying to feed experience to people I don't necessarily want getting it. Alright, screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this guy with the scout. Let's shoot your bow at him. Shoot your thorns at him. Good. And now, go in and sort him. Really? Really? Alright, that's fine. Yeah, I guess you get your uh, your time to shine. There you go. And we're gonna make you a hero. So as a as a hero, once again, no leadership, but better attacks and hit points. Delvador, my old master, you've saved the island from the orcs. Wow, Captain Obvious over here. How did the island fall to such as these? So Ashavir basically sent the orcs here because she's just a huge bitch, <laughs> essentially. And she's going to try this guy for treason and for training magi. Uh, we've come from Blackwater. Where else has she attacked? She's taken control of the Bay of Pearls and turned them into slaves. And there's even rumors she may attack Elinzafar. How many forces does she have at the Bay of Pearls? Can we take it back from her? We must indeed go there. Let us therefore rest here a little and then set sail for the bay. Hopefully we will defeat her forces there. So we've given up the idea of hiding out here for a while. Instead, we're going to uh, go on the offensive. And since I finished 11 turns early, like a lot early, uh, we got, uh, we're going to start with 250 extra gold in the next scenario, which is, th that's what you kind of hope for in this scenario. This scenario basically exists to train up your units and get you a whole bunch of bonus gold. You know what? It's only been about 20 minutes. Let's jump right into the next scenario. The Bay of Pearls. So, this is the Bay of Pearls. It looks like they have those merfolk working hard. Indeed it does. It also looks like they have many, many troops. I should go around the bay and distract some of them. You and the rest rescue the merfolk. Alright, be careful. So, um, victory here is either we can beat one guy and just hold until 24 turns is over, or we can defeat both of them. And, if the time runs out with both of them still alive, we lose. So, what we've got in this scenario is a couple of, uh, we've got one kind of non-standard mechanic, which is these cages. By getting someone onto those cages, we can rescue the merfolk inside. But the, at the beginning of every scenario, the game turns just slow as mud while it loads assets and such. Um, and by doing that, we get some merfolk units that we can use. We've also got... So we've got an orcish warrior over there, we've got an orcish warrior over there. And all of these villages are owned by this guy. So what we're going to do first is recall. As usual. We're going to recall, definitely we're going to recall him. We're definitely going to recall our captain. And we're going to recall, since we only get three slots, we're also going to recall our ranger who's half leveled. And then Conrad is going to run over there. All right, thank you for rescuing us. Now we can help you fight the evil orcs. The main cage where they keep most of the mermen is in the northwest. So what we can do with these guys is we can use these guys to... Uh, sort of chain up all freeing all of these mer people. So now we've got a whole bunch of mer dudes, and they're all loyal. Um, they're not great, especially because they're kind of limited to, to effectiveness in water, but what they can do is they can let us get all of these villages very easily, and then we can go and fight these naga and free up that cage as well.
So this guy's actually recruiting quite a few level 2 units, which is a little bit scary. Our units, of course, have to cross this uh, ford very, very slowly. It doesn't hurt to recall mages because they are, uh, well, they they already cost 20 gold. So we're definitely going to recruit our, or recall our loyal mage. And let's also recall our druid for healing purposes. And let's recall our knights and our hero. We will obviously want some chaff as well, some level 1 units to, to take hits. But we're at this point, at this point we've built up a pretty healthy core of uh, level 2 units to be going on with. Let's get over here, rescue some more mer dudes. Okay, the bats are coming out to fight us, not unexpected. As are the Naga. So the Naga are the northerners, the evil version of the mermen. They actually do better on land. They have a weaker attack, but they get more strikes. But boss, why are we only using bats and nagas? Because we need to control the seas and the merfolk, and nagas and bats are best for doing that. But orcs are the most powerful race in all of- Shut up, worm! I'm the boss! Ah, oh, poor bug. Come on, you. Move. One warning that I will give you, as you may have already noticed. Uh, West Noth is not a hugely optimized game. It's great. I love it. But it's not hugely optimized. Just fair warning. Now, let's get... Of the rest of our recall list, don't really need a lot of these units. I may actually clear some of them out. Uh, this would be a good one to have. We're not going to bother with him right now. First of all, we're going to recall our knights. And then we're actually going to start recruiting. So we've got our two knights. And now let's get... Uh, let's get an elvish archer first off. So we've got a trio of bats and a naga. What we want to do is we definitely want to take that village and break that cage. Because that gets us three merfolk. Now we want to move in and surround the bats. Because the bats will be hugely, hugely annoying unless we take care of them. Of note, in water combat, you get better defense in shallow water than in deep water. In deep water, you're 50%, in shallow water, you're 60%. So we've killed one bat. We could attack this Naga fighter, but I think instead I'd rather attack this bat. Okay, great. So we, we have the forces here to overwhelm these guys without too much trouble. Um, he's got another Naga who'll be joining him, but we should still be able to take it out pretty easily. This scenario starts slow, because you have this, uh, it starts off with the battle in the water, basically. Um, on land, both of you have to pass through fords in order to get anywhere, which slows the whole process down. And the orcs are finally pushing out to meet us with their orcish warriors and such, and they're probably going to meet us around nighttime. Ha <laughs> ha! Now orcs will rule over land and sea! Will someone kill this idiot for me, please? <laughs> yeah, Bug just changed unit type into a unit that only exists in this scenario, which is the sea orc. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, at this point he's pretty garbage, but now he can move in water, which is sort of hilarious. So Bug will be coming out to, uh, to try and face us here. Woe is me, oh the terror, oh the horror. I can have 70% defense in a reef, so I'm definitely going to take that. Let's go stab this dude. However, fighting at night, of course, the Nagas have an advantage because they do the same damage at night, whereas we do less damage at night. So it's best if we can try to fish, finish off these Nagas quickly. And that Naga is doing grossly disproportionate damage. Come on, get him. There we go, we got him. Might lose Kaba here. But try not to. But I think we've got this Naga pretty much wrapped up. He says immediately before missing three attacks in a row. Come on. Don't be stupid. There we go, got him finally. 
That one bat is still flying around free, unfortunately. So, push our troops forward onto land. Finally, let's actually put you in the water temporarily. All the knights line up to pass through. We've still got a ton of money, of course. This scenario does cost you a ton of money. Uh, let's recall that one scout. Yeah, that one. And then let's recruit an elvish fighter and a mage. We've got one mage, I'd like to have two. Keep pushing forward. We're going to work to establish a line as far forward as we can. Probably, given where they are, probably we're going to end up establishing a line right around here or possibly right around here in order to hold. Don't do it. Don't do it, bat. Don't do it, bat. Don't do it. Don't do it. They did it. The bastards. The bats are just... See, sea orcs are not very good. Uh, fortunately, it looks like the wolf riders are getting distracted. Um, which is very, very stupid of them, because their defense in the water is garbage. And the mermen's defense in the water is pretty good. So, you know, I can go here, have an 80% chance to hit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can just do that, basically. Uh, you, sir, kill that bat, please. I said kill that bat, please, not... Okay, fine, you killed the bat, good job. Now, what we want to do is we'll move a couple guys down here to block them off. Move a guy over there to stab Bug the Sea Orc. And this third guy will... Um, that bat is actually possibly going to level, which I don't like. We'll go get that last cage pretty soon here. But we're kind of busy right at the moment. Wow, two misses with 80% chance to hit. That's impressive. That was actually a 50% uh, hit rate, approximately. So you take that. Get the captain up behind you. Our knights should be able to make a little bit of distance this turn. Yeah, I can I can form up here. They can't quite reach me, so that's good placement. Get our other units going on. We're only at plus seven income right now. Let's get another shaman. Let's get an archer. And let's get another elvish fighter. I think one more turn and I'll start moving Conrad out as well. Okay. Yeah, we definitely want to get that cage because that cage has some... Uh, Excuse me, that cage has some good, good stuff inside it. Statistically speaking, this should be a lost fight. But they're, uh, they're doing pretty well. Yep, they, they're doing pretty well, unfortunately. Okay, on land, the fight is about to start going our way. That orcish warrior is a little bit isolated. I should be able to get a nice alpha strike that kills him off. I should have slowed him, actually. But what I can do here is... On 40% defense terrain. If I move up there... Yeah, you can't actually reach him. And I should be able to get a night kill here. There we go. Excellent. Now, they can hit that knight. They can hit Haldiel. But... Should be fine. He can weather a round of attacks. Especially since he has a healer beside him. Um, they can, however, attack the healer as well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put... Yeah, because it's still only the one warrior, so I'm going to put Harinal right in front of her. Because she'll heal him up, and it will mean that she doesn't take any damage. Now, one more round of recruitment. We're going to recruit an Elvish Scout to get up to the party quickly. We're going to recruit another Fighter, and we're going to recruit another Archer. And then Conrad is going to join the line. 
now. Mabua, kill off this guy. There we go, good. Gwimli, Gwimli, what a name. Get over there. We're crying out loud. Uh, I don't really want to fight Bug right at the moment, although I don't have much of an option. Like, he's going to attack somebody, so I need to finish him off. Really? The dice are not helping me in this engagement. Come on, get him, get him. Oh man, you didn't get him. Alright, that's fine. My mermen are getting really, really beaten up, unfortunately. Come on. They're hitting him a lot. Like, they're getting very, very lucky with their hits here. Oof. Oof. Ow. I knew that was likely to happen, but it still hurt. But now it's done. So the damage bonus is going away. Let's watch a mage attack, shall we? Um, you actually need to fall back just a little bit. You, that space can, you can go to... I would like you to ensnare. Let's pull you back one space for a moment. Actually, just hit him with thorns. Uh, Elvish Scout. I'd like to get the Scout in to get the kill on that war. Well, no, because that warrior is level 2. Gives 16 experience. That would be a little bit of a waste. Let's get Elrian in. Get the magic missile. Good hit. Yep. Yep. Very, very good. Now, who needs 16 experience? Because you don't. You only need to kill a level 1. Um, let's give it to Haldia. Keep keep leveling Haldia up. Alright, good job. Now, that Orcish Archer, on the other hand, we can get Nifalael to kill. Um, let's move our Ranger forward. Right here to attack. Melee. Now, we're going to have to be careful here. These guys can't reach me, but could be swarmed with units if we can't actually kill off. The, uh, the Orcish Archer here. Let's get our other knight forward. Do a little bit of sword slashing. Wow, you're just a failure. Thank you. Then what I'd like is to put you right there. Move the captain down. 36% chance to kill, 21% chance to kill. So what that means is I need you to come up here. No, not you. I need you to come up here. And sword him. Excellent, that was perfect. Great, so now Nifalel has leveled up to an Elvish Rider. Elvish Riders have slightly better attacks and they maintain their speed. In fact, they actually get a little bit faster. So, I can now just, just hop around and have pretty decent attacks anywhere I want because this unit can just move super, super quick. We've got an Elvish Hero. Uh, yeah, let's put this archer up there. That'll be a tempting target for them. They might kill her, but probably not with only two units. And then we'll put our... Well, I mean, he's going to live. So they may well be able to kill her since she only has 30% defense. But, I mean, that's what level 1 units are for in Westnoth. You sacrifice them to draw attention away from your level 2s. It's, uh, it's a cruel life, but it's... it's They knew the risks when they took the job. Probably. They probably knew the risks when they took the job. We've got our second wave coming up. Our merfolk, our, our battered and broken merfolk, are having a spot of difficulty, to be honest. Please kill him. Please kill him. Please kill him. Thank you. Um. <sighs> yeah, my problem now is I've let these guys get too beaten up. So kill him. Thank you. Thank you. Please die, bug. I excellent. I'm glad that you died. Because I hated you and everything that you stood for. <sighs> um this fight I kind of need to abandon, to be fully honest. Like these guys are going to take him down. Cuz they have they're doing 5 damage. They only need to hit him twice and they've got 40% chance to hit him. So, if I want to fight this, what I actually have to do is I actually have to be in... 
Yeah, I need to be there. Excellent, okay. Now the odds are a little bit better. Hopefully this guy will just take this village and then we can take all these units and just leave. We can go up here, open that cage, kill these two Naga, and be in the clear. Let's run one more turn here. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Okay. Okay, yep. What I expected, but that's fine. These three units are absolutely going to get wiped here. Alrighty. Move our mage up. Move our dude up. At this point, I would like to start work on leveling a mage as well. Because leveled up mages do a ton of damage. But, obviously they're hard to level because they're flimsy. Like, Elrian would be a great unit to level up, but, as I said, he's flimsy, and he only has a missile attack. So anyone with a good missile attack, he can't really get XP off of. So what I need is I need him to blast that Orcish Warrior. So that's fine, we can do that. Let's swing around to the side here. Let's get our captain pushed up. And that should be... I'd like to get him down to 10 HP, but I don't think that's really viable. So let's go up this way. Excellent. There we go. So now Elrian's on his way. As for these two archers, we can use them. We can use one of them to feed experience to Haldiel. There we go. Uh, I shouldn't have moved uh, Maver up there before I did that, because that sort of just... Uh, lost experience, lost move from him. We can get Yitter over around this way. Who would I like to give experience to here? I could give experience to the Elvish Scout, or nah, I'm just gonna kill him with Yitter. This is what knights are good for. You can, you can break through lines in during good times of day and or on good terrain. You can break through lines very, very quickly and uh, allow your troops to push forward very, very quickly. So you can go over there. You can go right up here and stab him a little bit. And you can push up and you can push up with him. Okay, that's the land. Now, on the water... Kill him. Do it. Do it. Do it for me. You didn't do it. I need you to do it. Get rid of that wolf rider. Thank you. These two guys are almost full health, but we have to kill this vampire bat before we go and before we go open the cage. Okay, killed the vampire bat. Great. We've still got four merfolk, which is not bad. And on land, we are pretty much rolling the enemy up. We took their hardest hit down here, those warriors, and cleaned them out in record time. So now he's... Oh my gosh, I forgot to take that village. So now, this uh, Orcish Warrior up here really doesn't have anything left. All he can do is recruit one unit per turn or less. Actually, less at this point, since we've taken a bunch of his villages. Um, and send them towards us, and we'll just kind of blast them as they come in and feed off them to get experience. Hopefully, by the end of this scenario, I'll be able to level Elrian up. Especially because Elrian getting the kill shot on Managagwin up here should be pretty easy, and that'll give him an extra 16 experience right at the end. So all I need to do is get two more kills with Elrian in between now and then, and he should be fine. We've gotten one level this turn already, this game already, and then I can spread a little bit more experience to my other Elvish Scout and to, uh, where do you go, and to Haldiel. If I can get Haldiel level up to a Grand Knight in the next couple of scenarios, that would be fantastic. But in any case, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.